Hi, my name's Ian Buckley, and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today, we'll be making a start with Scratch, which is a visual programming language that comes bundled with the Raspberry desktop. We'll be using this to make a simple program which will react both to what we are doing on screen in terms of moving a character across the screen, and it will also turn an LED on and off, which we will attach to our GPIO pins. So to get started, let's set up the LED with our Raspberry Pi. So first we want to set up our Raspberry Pi. Um, you'll notice that the power is not plugged in right now. That's always a good idea to not have it powered up when you're making your circuit, just in case you do something wrong and end up frying your Pi. Uh, all we're gonna need today is two patch cables and one 220 ohm resistor. Although any other resistor value should work, your LED might not be as bright if you have a particularly high value. Um, and then uh, a normal red LED. So the way we're gonna set this up is by just putting our LED into the breadboard to begin with. Now you wanna make sure you know which side is the positive and which side is the negative side of your LED. You can usually tell because one of the legs will be slightly shorter than the other and that is the negative side. But um, if you can't see that, if you look carefully at your LED, you can see on one side it is totally circular and on the other side it has sort of a flat edge. And that's another way of telling if the LED is positive or negative on either side. So let's put it into our breadboard like this, with the positive side on the left here, and the negative side on the right. And now we take our resistor, and we want to make sure that one of the legs of the resistor is in the same line in this direction as the positive line of the LED, and then the other leg can go in somewhere along here. There we go. Now, we also want to make sure that we can attach it to our Raspberry Pi, so we do that by attaching one of these cables to one leg of the resistor. This is the positive side, so this is going to go to our GPIO pin. And we take our other cable and attach it to the negative or ground side of our LED, and this one will be going to ground. So, exactly where are we going to plug these in today? Well, we want to use GPIO pin number 5, so if we look on our handy little chart here, we can see that GPIO pin number 5 is here, and that is, what, 6 or 7 pins in from the bottom? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we count carefully, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Always count twice. And we can see from the same chart that we, if we want to plug it into ground, next to GPIO pin number five is a ground pin. So we can just stick our ground pin on this side of it. So um, have a quick check over once again, just to make sure that you've got all of these things in line. And once you're sure that all of these things are absolutely right and in place, take your power cord and boot up your Raspberry Pi. So to get started, we go to the Raspberry menu and look under programming and select Scratch 2. And it will open up with the uh, example project that is already there. Before we can get started with the Raspberry Pi though, we have to add a couple of things because uh, you can do a lot of great things with Scratch already, but to make the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi work, we need to navigate to More Blocks and add an extension and select pi.gpio. And what this will do is it will give us the option to set our GPI pins to high and low. So let's look at how we'd make a program where you press a button and that changes the pin to high or low and turns our LED on or off. So to get started with our little program, let's drag our little cat over to the left side of the screen here and add something we can use as a button to click on. Uh, so down here in the sprites part of the screen, if you click this little face here, it'll allow you to choose a new sprite from their library. And uh, I think this arrow looks good. So let's click OK. And it'll give us the arrow, which we can now drag up to the top of the screen. Now we want to start by making our blocks of code for our little cat. So uh, make sure that you have the cat selected uh, in the sprites menu just here. You can also just click on the cat itself. Um, and you'll know if you have the right thing selected because up in the top right here it'll show a picture of a cat rather than the picture of the arrow. So what do we want to happen with our cat? Well, we want every time that this arrow is clicked, we'd like the cat to move. So we're going to tell it to move 10 steps. 
And uh, we also want our GPIO pin where we've already put our LED to turn on. So in the more blocks menu here, we can drag GPIO under move 10 steps, which means that we've done just after the 10 steps have been moved. And in this little hole here, we want to select and enter the number of our GPIO pin. Uh, we had it set up today just on GPIO pin number five, but if your GPIO pin is different, just have a look at your chart and make sure you put the right number in here. And uh, once this has been turned on, we want it to stay on for just a short moment, and then we want it to turn off again. So if we look in the control menu, there is a thing here that says wait one second. That seems about the right amount of time. So we can clip that onto the bottom of our GPIO block here, go back to more blocks, and drag the GPIO block out here. Once again, we want it to be the same pin, so GPIO number five, but we want to set it to output low. Now, right now, this will only do something if we click on it and just tell it to do it. But what we want to happen is every time we click on our arrow, then it will carry this out. So if we now click on the arrow down here, we can use a different thing in here called an event in order to make this work. Specifically, we need to send a message. So every single time that this is clicked, we want it to send a message to our cat here. So we can use this block, which is when the sprite is clicked, it'll do whatever is beneath it. And we can also use broadcast, which will send a message out to everything uh, with whatever we have written here. So we don't have to change it from message one, but I'm gonna add a new message, which is go. So every single time this is clicked, it broadcasts the message go to everything else. Uh, now, it's quite simple, we only have two things. So we can go back to our cat now. And on the same events menu, when it receives go, we can just put that on the top, which means every single time that the arrow sends the message go, the cat will receive it and move. And if you look down at your breadboard now, you should notice that every time you click this arrow, the LED will come on and turn off again after one second. So our program works now. When we press the button, he moves and the LED turns on or off. But what happens when our cat gets all the way over to this other side of the screen and we keep pressing the button? Well, uh, they go off the screen and there's not much we can do about it. So let's move them back to where they began and change our code so that every time the cat gets to the side of the screen, it automatically comes back to the start and the game can go on forever and ever and ever. So to do this, we need to look into our controls. What we need is if the cat hits the side of this screen, it needs to go back to the left side of the screen. So we use this if then statement. We know we want to connect it to the bottom of our block here because we know we want to do it after it's moved and turn the light on or off. And after each one of these, if it is touching the edge, we want to send it back. So we use the sensing blocks to work this out. And the top one here says if it is touching. So we drag that into the little diamond shape thing here. You'll know it's right because it glows when you put the mouse over it. And we want to change it from mouse pointer to edge. So if it is touching the edge of the screen at the end of this movement, it will do whatever is in here. So what do we want to do in here? Well, we want to move it. So let's look under the motion menu. And if you look, there is a go to here. So let's drag that into the block right here. And these values that are in here are actually where our character is already, so we don't need to change them. But let's say that you actually decided you wanted to start your character somewhere a little bit different. Let's say we wanted to put him a little bit further down here. Then what you can do is just put your mouse cursor over him and you'll see in the bottom right hand side of the screen here the values that you want to write down. So in this case it's minus 184 and minus 68. I'm going to put that in here just to make it slightly easier to remember. I'm actually going to say minus 185. And I've already forgotten the other one. It was minus 67. Let's just say minus 70. Minus 70. So now, whenever it's touching the edge, it should move back over. So if we press our button, press our button, let's speed it up just a little bit. And we keep pressing our button. As soon as it hits the edge, it sends him back to the start so that we can keep going with this game forever. So this has been an introduction to using Scratch on the Raspberry Pi. 
There is a whole load of stuff you can do within Scratch. Uh, you can trigger sounds and you can use all kinds of different things with the GPIO blocks of your Raspberry Pi. Um, you don't have to necessarily attach an LED, you could attach a servo to it so that every time you press the button it would wave at you or something like that. Um, Scratch is a really good way to learn the basics of coding. Uh, all of these different sensor points and control points that we looked into are the basics of coding itself and learning it in this block form is a great way to get started. Uh, there is also a load of great resources for beginner coding on the Make Use Of website and there is an article that goes along with this video. If any of it was a little fast or hard to follow, you can read that on the main website too. So thank you very much for watching today, folks. My name's Ian, you've been watching MakeUseOf.com and don't forget to subscribe for weekly tech tips and giveaways.